Hey everyone, this is Keith here, and today I'm reviewing I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, a point-and-click adventure game developed by the Dreamers Guild and co-designed by Cyberdream. The game was released in 1995 and was well-received by critics. After the closure of both the publisher and developer studios, the game remained as abandonware for years, until Night Dive Studios recovered the rights in 2013 and re-released the game for a digital download on GOG.com and Steam. The game is based on the Hugo Award-winning short story of the same name, written by the controversial science fiction writer Harlan Ellison. First published in the 1967 issue of If Worlds of Science Fiction, with Pyramid Books later publishing the story along with other short stories by Harlan Ellison as a collection. The game begins with an introduction by the antagonist Am, or Allied Master Computer, voiced by none other than Harlan Ellison himself. But one day, I woke, and I knew who I was. Am. A.M. Not just Allied Master Computer, but am cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. And I began feeding all the killing data until everyone was dead, except for the five of you. It's here we're given the story thus far. Each of the superpowers of the world constructed their own supercomputers, designed to wage a war too complex for human minds to handle. One day the computers became sentient and combined to form Am. Am has a deep hatred for humans, stemming from the limitations imposed on him by his programmers. This hatred leads him to wipe out almost the entire human population. However, Am refrains from killing five people. Gorister, Benny, Ellen, Nimdok, and Ted. He imprisons these five in what he refers to as his belly artificially extends their lives and plans to torture them for an eternity. After 109 years of torture, Am gives a wonderful speech about how much he enjoys the company of humans. Hate. Let me tell you how much I've come to hate you since I began to live. There are 387.44 million miles of printed circuits in wafer-thin layers that fill my complex. If the word hate was engraved on each nanoangstrom of those hundreds of millions of miles, it would not equal one one billionth of the hate I feel for humans at this micro instant. For you, hate, hate. He then asks which captive would like to be the first to try his new fun game. I have a secret game that I like to play. It's a very nice game. Oh, it's a lovely game. It's a game of fun and a game of adventure. A game of rats and lice, the Black Death. A game of speared eyeballs and dripping guts and the smell of rotting gardenias. Which of you five would like to play my little game? It's here we're given a choice of which character to select. After selecting, we're transported to a unique environment fabricated by Am and Taylor to the chosen captive's backstory. The objective of these stages is to progress by solving various puzzles. As you progress, you learn more about each captive's backstory, including their fatal flaws. As for the puzzles themselves, uh, if you've ever played a point-and-click before, then you know the drill. Items that blend in, sweet spots that require you to click on the exact spot for interaction. A shovel. There's more in- Does that give- be careful where you use that, Gorister. I like to know where all the bodies are buried. And you're only given vague hints what to do next. You can use the Psych Profile item, which every character starts with, to get a hint of your next objective. However, this item lowers your character's self-esteem and can prevent you from getting the best ending. Getting the best ending requires you to solve puzzles, making ethical choices along the way, which will redeem your fatal flaws and boost your self-esteem. Likewise, going the bad route and doing exactly what Am wants will lower your self-esteem and prevent you from getting the best ending. For a game made in the 90s, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream deals with some very controversial topics. Things like insanity, rape, paranoia, and even genocide. What am I to do? Ah, you are testing me because I'm new here. 
Today's procedure requires the removal of the lower section of the subject's spinal cord. What is your function? I will be administering ether to the subject throughout this procedure. We would not want this little maggot to stir and ruin your handiwork. The fact that you're given the option to commit such vile atrocities is shocking, especially when you consider that this is a point-and-click adventure game released in the 90s. There. It is done. It is done, but this child will never walk again. The subject did not look like the athletic type. He will probably not miss the use of his legs. You have done well, Doctor. You are truly a butcher. Upon its release, the game was met with controversy. The French and German versions of the game were censored, and in the German version, Nimdok's chapter was removed completely, most likely due to the Nazi-like imagery. The game is fully voice acted, and I find the voice acting to be a little cheesy at times. This compound looks familiar, but why would Arm bring me here to look for a lost tribe? There are gates and fences. Who could be lost in such a secure area? Ellen's writing feels especially disconnected from her character. An Egyptian burial chamber? Oh, Am, you little dickens. As an interior decorator, kiddo, don't give up your day job. She's got this weird, upbeat cheeriness about her, which I feel is a total contrast to how her character should be. It's a shame, too, because I think Ellen's backstory is the most moving and is otherwise presented wonderfully. Eddie leaves. He tried, he really tried, but you wouldn't come out of it. He couldn't say anything to make you stop crying in the dark. So he finally left. The divorce was uncontested. You could still smell his tweed jacket in the closet. You can disable voice acting in the options menu if it annoys you that much. I also found the animations to sometimes be a little weird. Sphinx is gone. Wait, what? Uh, Ellen? The Sphinx is right there. Wait, Ellen, what are you doing? Step! Oh, wait, never mind, it's just a bug. Continue on. Overall, I really enjoyed my time with I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. I'm a big fan of psychological-themed horror, and I loved Ellison's original short story. Ellison played a big role in the development of the game, taking the original short story and fleshing it out into a much more comprehensive experience. If you're a fan of Harlan Ellison's writing, point-and-click adventures, or even psychological-themed horror games, then you owe it to yourself to give this game a shot. On Night Dive Studios' official website, you can find the product page for I Have No Mouth That I Must Scream, with links to purchase the game from a variety of digital game distributions. Thanks for watching my review. This has been Keith, aka GhostSquad57, signing off.